Well, it's about that time of day again here, folks. Welcome back, boys and girls. JJ here from School of Trade. Welcome to your nightly newsletter. Today is the 6th of February, 2014, and it smells like non-farm payrolls, doesn't it? Why do I say that? Well, looking at what happened today, we'll take a brief look at what happened today. We'll talk about what's coming down the pipe for tomorrow, and then we're going to roll up our sleeves and take a look at some charts here this evening so we can be ready to capitalize tomorrow during non-farm payrolls, which is our biggest news report that we get as traders. Exciting time right now. Now, this morning, we had a lot of activity. Boy, a lot of stuff going on in the market this morning. We had Red Star News that came out at 8.30. That got markets shaken up. We saw jobless claims here. Looking over my notes from today, uh, crude goes higher, right? 60 basis points, ending just below 98 even. Gold pushes higher, but ends flat. And that's what really gives us that big clue that we must be coming up on some big news because gold jumped boy, almost 1% today and then finishes all the way back pretty much at break even, uh, just below 12.58 uh, for gold prices. Mini Russell, pretty much all the E-minis, all the equities gained about 1% today as basically people, like I said yesterday, considering them to be well-priced bargain shopping, right? So we get equities right now. Uh, you know, to be completely honest with you, I think you're crazy to be bearish equities, right? I think there's no doubt that equity is going to keep pushing higher. It's just a matter of time. We needed a retracement, and this is our pullback. This is exactly what we're getting right now. So bargain hunters picking up equities here this morning uh, on, on the way here to non-farm payrolls tomorrow. Um, Red Star News this morning. Remember Red Star News, big important news. We got more tomorrow. It started this morning, though, with jobless claims. And we pretty much got exactly what we were expecting. We got the first few hours of the session today. We're very active because we had jobless claims that came out lower than expected. Okay, we're right around that 331,000 for the weekly jobless claims. And what was really amazing was how the markets reacted to today's jobless claims. Now, just 48 hours ago, just two days ago, what did we see from ADP? Lower than expected ADP employment. Now remember, ADP employment is similar to non-farm payrolls. You want it to be higher, right? ADP employment, non-farm payrolls, they're telling us how many jobs have been added. Jobless claims are the opposite. Jobless claims, well, maybe not the opposite, but jobless claims are people who are filing for unemployment claims here in the US. So when those jobless claims go down, we assume, based on the, uh, uh, based on the numbers that we see, we assume that more people are finding jobs, right? Now, there are obviously some wrinkles that go into that jobless claims report, uh, such as people leaving the job market or the job hunt and people's uh, uh, benefits expiring. So those numbers can be skewed a little bit. But what was very interesting this morning to see in the jobless claims report was the bullishness that came afterwards. What ADP report, right? Almost as if the markets had completely forgotten about Wednesday morning. Because you remember, Wednesday was another very big day. Remember goal on Wednesday? Remember Monday was a very big day. Tuesday was a little bit slow and sloppy, range bound. Wednesday was a big day. We were expecting a Thursday to have some, have some spunk to it today because of the jobless claims and the Red Star News at 830. And it definitely didn't, it definitely didn't disappoint. Jobless claims come out lower. All of a sudden now, everybody's bullish again this morning. Equities pushing higher. Uh, crude tried to keep going higher, ended up closing a little bit lower off the highs today, but a very strong day considering the circumstances. Only two days ago, we saw ADP. How funny how much one, two days can make, right, when it comes to market personality. I think a very big clue, though, today was international trade. International trade was that Red Star news that we saw at 8.30 this morning, we talked about it in the trade room this morning, but for those of you who didn't dig under the surface of that news report, international trade can be a little bit odd. It's a little bit technical, right? What's the import exports? What does that really mean uh, to how we trade? Well, remember, uh, with the exception of FOMC and non-farm payrolls, uh, none of this news really has any long-term lasting effects. But very interesting to see today, though, that we had some very disappointing exports, right? So basically, international trade is imports and exports. Now, think about this. If we have very strong exports, what would that suggest? That would suggest people outside of the U.S. have not only the interest, but the financial means to purchase our products. Now, why is that a big deal? Because if I'm living in, oh, I don't know, let's just say I'm living in Australia, and I'm going to use one of my Aussie dollars, okay, to buy, oh, I don't know, a piece of furniture here from the United States. So, so somebody in Australia is going to import 
right, that furniture from the United States. Now here's what we have to do. I have to take my Aussie dollar and I have to pay for those US products with Aussie dollars. So if my Aussie dollar is weak compared to the US dollar, what's going to happen? That import for me is going to be really expensive. Okay? It'll be very expensive. So what happens is, is when we have very sluggish exports, that means fewer people are importing into their country. What does that suggest? That suggests that either our dollar is too strong, or what's really happening is, is we're seeing a slowdown in these emerging markets. So all the news is really starting to line up. If you remember earlier on in the week, we dealt with manufacturing, right? Blame it on the snow, remember all that? That started to come back. But we've always been, we've been hearing about these emerging markets, right? China got it, kind of got things rattled around a little bit a few weeks ago regarding their, uh, I can't remember what the exact uh, reason was, but bottom line is China kick-started the concern about emerging markets. Emerging markets have been what has been affecting currencies, and that's been really kind of spiraling into the U.S. markets. So very interesting to see how even the international trade number this morning came out really kind of confirming for us that the U.S. is still very strong because our imports were strong, which means here in the U.S. we are able to import products. Our dollar is strong, and our economy is strong. And of course, we got some sluggish exports, with, which confirms for us that yes, indeed, the global marketplace is slowing down a little bit, but we are still very strong here in the U.S. Again, another reason to be bullish equities, right? You wonder why equities gained a full 1% today. Um, looking over some more of the news that came out today, the ECB's Draghi. Now, Draghi, of course, Draghi to the ECB is like Janet Yellen or Alan Greenspan or Ben Bernanke to our, F, to our Fed. So ECB's Draghi, the, the head of the, uh, the ECB, decided to back off the uh, talks of interest rates cuts this morning. Remember, this time yesterday, we heard some rumors that they could possibly have a surprise rate cut today, most likely going to be in March at their next meeting. But today, though, he took a more hawkish approach, basically saying that they're not going to be rushing into um, dropping interest rates, cutting interest rates. And we wonder why the euro went up over 1% today. So remember, these dealings in the ECB right now are, are affecting other currencies. Those are, those are the currencies that are affecting our dollar. So it's all intertwined. Very, very interesting environment we're in right now. More news. More news. Twitter. If you've got any Twitter stockholders out there, boy, it got pummeled today, down 21%. Boy, I kind of feel bad for Facebook because, you know, Facebook kind of has that guilt by association. You know, people sell Twitter and they're going to short Facebook too, right? Kind of tough to be uh, uh, a Facebook stockholder when nothing really revolved around it. It's Twitter getting pummeled today. Um, I think they tried to replace the hashtag with a dollar sign or something like that. I'm, I'm kidding with you. Uh, February 6th, this day in history, 1952. King George passes away in his sleep. His oldest daughter, Princess Elizabeth, becomes the new queen at age 27. Could you imagine being the queen of England at 27 years old? It's just an amazing, right? Could you imagine that? Uh, living in the U.S., obviously, we don't have the same type of hierarchy. You know, we obviously have elected officials. But uh, the, the, the interesting part about it, though, is, is how is how being at the age of 27, you're able to have control over, at that time, one of the most powerful countries in the world. So you learn something new today. Tomorrow, all eyes shift over to non-farm payrolls. In fact, as we said last night and as we saw today, this shift happened at about 11 a.m., 11.30 this morning. So as of this afternoon, all eyes and ears now are focused on tomorrow's big, important Red Star News, non-farm payrolls. We saw weaker than expected ADP employment on Wednesday morning this week. We're expecting, though, now, after seeing that jobless claims, we're expecting a relatively robust non-farm payrolls tomorrow. As always, though, I'm not going to try to predict. I will only react. Here's how we trade non-farm payrolls tomorrow. Ready? You ready for it? One, two, three. What do we got? That's all we can do. I can't predict tomorrow. Right now, whatever I'm seeing on my screen right now is not trustworthy. Everything will be thrown out the window tomorrow morning. All right? So tomorrow morning, be very careful before we get trading after that non-farm payroll. Here's the deal. I'm not touching a single thing here before 8.30 tomorrow morning. And the biggest problem you're going to have when trading non-farm payrolls, my personal opinion, we've got to wait 15 minutes 
after that news report comes out. Whether one of two scenarios happen. Okay, again, I have no idea what this report's going to come out as. And I don't want you to try to predict or try to predict the price movement. It's not going to happen. We have to be careful of one of two things happening tomorrow morning. First, analysts have been analyzing, kind of funny how analysts be analyzing, but analysts have been looking at the non-farm payroll number for two weeks. Now imagine you're, you own a big trading firm, you've got a whole floor, a whole team of analysts that work for you. Okay, that's how it works. So the analysts have been telling you for the past week exactly what's to be happening as we go into non-farm payrolls. Everyone's got their anticipated number, and what ends up happening is, is with everybody analyzing the report two weeks out, guess what happens? The self-fulfilling prophecy. Human beings are very, very interesting in the way that whatever we fix on, whatever we focus on, we usually find a way to manifest. So what ends up happening is, is the news report, if it comes out tomorrow, here's scenario one, if it comes out tomorrow as expected, now the markets will be very sluggish and range bound because the markets were already pricing this report in. There's a term called pricing it in. And you've probably heard that before, right? Ah, the market already priced it in, right? Or uh, inflation or news has already been priced into the market, okay? What does that mean? That means that because so many people were aware of what the analysts were projecting, which you can find on any major news resource right now, well, if the analysts have been projecting this for two weeks, subconsciously, remember, I don't have control over this, but subconsciously, if I'm, in, if I'm a professional asset manager, I am casting my vote. I am executing trades that subconsciously are going to agree with what the analysts say. So the phenomenon is, by the time we get to the time the news is released, if it comes out as expected, right, within, within a few ticks, it's going to be slow, it's going to be sloppy, and it's going to be a little bit range bound right at 8.30. But don't let that fool you. 5, 10, 15 minutes later, we're going to find a trend. So the first scenario is the news comes out as expected, the market's priced it in, and we go sideways. That won't last long. We will break out up or down, but I have to be patient for it. Scenario two. Scenario two is the complete opposite. Tomorrow morning, we see something that completely blows our mind. It's above, it's below, whatever the case may be, if tomorrow's news comes out outside of expectations, even more if it's a bigger than expected jump or if it's just uncharacteristically higher or lower. Now you can hear those analysts running down the hall into the boss's office saying, boss, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What you're going to see next is the next 15 minutes are going to be violent. All right. We're talking violent. This is violent. This is FOMC bloodbath type of violent. So tomorrow, scenario two is, is this number comes out and surprises everyone. Now, the next 15 minutes are going to be impossible to catch up to. Up, down, up, down. Looking like the world is coming to an end. But what's going to happen is, is traders and analysts and speculators are all now going to frantically figure out what the report came in as, make an educated guesstimate on where it's going next, and place their bets from there. We want scenario two, because that's going to give us the best volatility tomorrow morning. But again, I want to make sure I repeat this. Whether we get as expected or not as expected, scenario one or two, we must be patient tomorrow after that non-farm payroll report comes out. Whether it takes duct tape, handcuffs, chicken wire, bungee cords, right? Whatever it takes, guys, keep off that mouse. Stay out of those trades here until about 8.45 tomorrow morning. Then find that trend and follow that trend. It's only going to last for a few hours. We'll be done tomorrow morning just before noontime tomorrow. Early in, early out. That's how Friday non-farm payroll goes. So be careful tomorrow morning on our best behavior. Like I told you, nothing before the news comes out. Everything we see here tonight, think of it like a big Etch-a-Sketch. Remember those Etch-a-Sketch boards? You shake them up and you're going to start over again? That's what's going to happen tomorrow morning. All the trend lines, all the moving averages, all the patterns, they're all going to get shaken up tomorrow morning. So the best thing we can do is, like I said before, almost ignore it all and then what do you got? Make a decision once the news comes out. All right, we're just getting rock and rolling here, guys. Just getting warmed up. Now I'm going to go take a look at some charts here. Again, like I said though, 
resist the temptation to predict, and let's get ready for Friday's non-farm payroll report. Are you with me? Let's get started. All right, guys and gals, thanks for sticking around with me here. Thanks for taking the first step to be ready for tomorrow morning's non-farm payroll report. Let's roll those sleeves up and let's get started looking at some charts. Now, before we get started, I just want to remind you guys here that we offer a free trial of our membership. Head on over to schooloftrade.com. Check out the free trial. As part of your free trial, I've got a special invitation for you to come join me to watch how I trade live from our live trade room. So make sure you register for our free trial. You can also learn more about our different courses, starting with our beginner, intermediate, and advanced courses right on our website. Also, if you're not registered yet for our newsletter, make sure you do that. That way you'll get this newsletter in your email inbox every evening around 8 p.m. Eastern time. And remember, this newsletter is perfect for somebody who is in Australia, Asia, Europe, because it can be used for the following day, right? That's the point of it. That way, at the end of the day, you've got all the time in the world now to use this information to get ready for tomorrow's opening bell. Let's keep moving. First things first this morning, or this evening, I should say, let's grab crude. Now, crude oil had a very busy day today, big gap up overnight, and then came tumbling back down into that range. This was very interesting. Now, do you remember what I said last night on the newsletter? We talked about this previous week's high and how that may stall things out. You can see that's exactly what happened. So we saw the opening print here. We were bullish this morning. Okay, Tried to get into a couple buy opportunities there, but didn't get anything out of crude today. Very, very sloppy day on crude. Um, really felt like they were waiting for non-farm payrolls. And then you can see by the end of the day today, price action ended up coming all the way back into that range. So this is why I said at the beginning today of this, of this newsletter, I said it definitely smells like something's coming around the corner because markets today really moved higher but couldn't sustain and pretty much came right back to where they began. You know, crude ended the, end of the day up like 60 basis points, but it was, uh, it was a bullish move, but pretty much ended the day on, on, on a kind of a sideways note here today. We have a double distribution day here on crude, which means we had volume at the high and then volume back at the low. So, you know, everything really pointing to all eyes tomorrow on non-farm payrolls. I'm looking tomorrow morning for an opening print above 98.83 to be bullish, looking to below 97.44 to be bearish. We had a bullish day today, typical range and closing at its lows. So basically what this tells us is, is again, price went up, couldn't sustain, came tumbling back down in, and here we are right inside almost the middle, you can see here, of this, of this weekly range. So we are definitely in balance this morning. Again, I'm, or this evening, I'm not going to try to I'm not going to try to predict this thing for tomorrow because again, all eyes are waiting on non-farm payrolls. But again, if we can see a print tomorrow morning at nine o'clock above 98.83, I'm going to be a buyer. If we can get a print below 97.44 tomorrow at nine o'clock, I'm looking to be a seller. I've got some easy levels down bottom here that I can use 96.26, 96.80. All right, guys. But you know these levels are are going to be tough to hold here. Tomorrow, if this news comes out bearish, it's going to pretty much make a make a run for these lows here. So the prior week low would be where I'd be shooting for if we got below that 97.44. So we should we should see a pretty a pretty uh, dramatic move tomorrow morning after this non-farm payroll report. We've been sitting here stagnant on crude for about a week, week and a half now. So we're definitely due for some for some big moves here on crude. So apparently everybody's waiting for tomorrow. Moving over here to the anchor chart, and I just want to remind you guys that I've posted for you a lot of the uh, uh, slower anchor charts that I've used in my analysis. So make sure you look below this video on my blog, and you'll see the three different chart time frames I've posted there, and you can see a lot more than what you're seeing on this screen right now. In the short term, we are bullish. You can see we got a bullish uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. We've since bounced off some support here at 97.82. I have another support level below at 97.23. So right now, all eyes are, are pointing higher, right? I mean, you can see here, it looks like we are bullish on crude. I've got one problem, though. I've got some resistance here. Our key moving averages are in our way right now. So what I'd be looking for is, I'd be looking for price to start moving higher, get above those moving averages if I'm looking to trade long here. Now, uh, again, I would love to give you guidance right now, but it's going to be very difficult for you to trade this overnight tonight. I would highly recommend that we sit on hands until after we get that news report tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. 
So right now, get me above this resistance, and yes, I can enter into a long, but guys, I just don't know how, I don't know how confident we can be in this right now. I would imagine we're going to sit here overnight, probably not get much out of it. We might go lower, higher, then get, and get sucked back up into this, but I would imagine, though, this 98 even area is probably going to be where we spend most of the evening, and then tomorrow morning, we're going to wait and see what happens at 8.30. If it comes out very bullish, if, if we have more jobs being added tomorrow than we expected, you better believe it. We're going to be, we're going to be taking off to the upside here. And I've got targets for you up top here. So targets up top would be 98.80, 99.36, 99.65. And, of course, who can forget about that big round number at $100 even. So use those levels as targets if we can get a big bullish clue here. I got that prior week low all the way down here at 95.21. That is definitely where we're headed if we get a, a bearish report tomorrow. So we're looking for the report tomorrow morning. If it's bullish, I'm buying. If it's bearish, we get that prior week low. Don't say I didn't warn you, though. Tomorrow morning, remember, two scenarios. If that non-farm payroll comes out as expected, we still have to wait because it's going to be a little bit sloppy as they figure out where they want to do next. If it comes out outside of expectations, it's going to be violent tomorrow morning. And still, same thing. You're going, to want to, you're going to want to wait about 15 minutes after that news report comes out. All right, moving through here. Let's go to gold here. Looking at gold. Now, gold had another very big range day. It was a busy day on gold. Buying it on the way up, selling it on the way back down. We opened inside the range today. So being inside the range, we were expecting this to be a range-bound day. We were expecting it to try to go higher. Uh, this was actually a Fibonacci level, a resistance level up top here that we talked about last night. Bounced right off it and came right back. So uh, gold, just like Russell this week, has been very volatile. We've had some great opportunities. Um, I traded gold this morning. I traded Russell this morning. Um, bought gold at the at the open. And then, of course, uh, uh sold gold on the way back down, bought the Russell, same thing. So we really had a, a roller coaster ride. Same thing yesterday. Big gap up, went up, came on down. This morning, goes up, comes on back down. So it's very easy to see these markets are waiting. And if there's one market out there that you really are going to see some big dramatic moves from non-farm payrolls, this is it, boys and girls. Gold is definitely the market that reacts to FOMC. It reacts to non-farm payrolls because, as you can imagine, gold being a shelter market, if non-farm payrolls comes out higher than expected, gold's going to drop tomorrow. If non-farm payrolls comes out lower than expected, gold's going to jump higher. Okay. Now, let's talk about what we're expecting. An opening print tomorrow at 8.20. Now, the gold opens up at 820, so it's going to be 10 minutes before non-farm payrolls. If we get an opening print below six, above 67.5, I'm going to be looking for buys. If I get an opening print below 52.5, I'm looking for sells. If I'm looking for buys, I've got right overhead here. i got some resistance overhead to be worried about there. I'll make sure I take my profit there before going higher. And we get the prior week low down here at the 1237.9. If we open up lower, that's exactly where we're going to be shooting for. I would not be surprised, though, if we try to make a run for if we get a lower than expected jobless or uh, uh, non-farm payrolls tomorrow, that's going to be bullish for, for gold. We got 1,300 staring us right in the face right there. It would not surprise me at all if this thing took off tomorrow morning at 8.30 and hit that 1,300. I've got levels at 96.4. I've got levels at double zero point six. So don't say I didn't warn you. 1,300, definitely within our radar. As we go to the downside, though, you can see here, I've got the prior week low. And then I get this level down here at 1218.7. So again... If we have gold, if we have non-farm payrolls comes out higher than expected, that would be bullish for the dollar. That would be bearish for the gold. We'll be looking for a short down to the prior week low. If it keeps on going, we're gunning for the 1218.7. Moving forward from gold VIP, let's go to the gold anchor chart now. And again, I want to remind you that I've got all of my other time frames have been posted on the blog with this newsletter. Okay, so make sure you check the blog post for that. That way you can see more of what I'm seeing here. Now, in the short term, we can see we have a very easy-to-spot price wedge. I drew some trend lines here from low to low. Trend lines up top from high to high. That creates the price wedge. And the price wedge is a very important clue 
because it tells us a couple things. First of all, a price wedge is a very significant uh, clue because it tells us with higher lows and lower highs, we are consolidating. Now, members, you've probably heard me say this before. When I see a price wedge, I'm looking for what? Fake out breakouts. Okay, that's the easiest way to trade a price wedge. So I'm not going to try to sell into the lows, but what I am going to do is I'm going to use this 1252.7 to 1250 area to try to buy the lows of the price wedge. Now, remember, all this gets thrown out the window tomorrow morning at non-farm payrolls. So just be aware, everything I'm talking about right now is likely to be different at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning after that news comes out. Because just you wait. If it goes craziness all over the place, which gold loves to do, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and look at these charts again. So come out and join me tomorrow morning in the trade room, okay? because I'll keep these charts updated for you, and I'll make sure that you're ready to capitalize on the opportunities that follow non-farm payrolls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy 52.7. I'm going to sell 65.8, 64.3. And I'm going to use this price wedge to look for a fake out breakout up top, to look for a fake out breakout down bottom. All right. Now, if you're a member of mine, we have a specific Fibonacci retracement level. Right. Which one is it? Remember which one it is? If you're a member of mine, it's the trigger zone number two. The trigger zone number two is what I'm going to be looking for tomorrow at the low and the high of this wedge. So. Assuming, assuming that non-farm payrolls comes out as expected tomorrow, right, does not shake things up, we should be buying the 52, buying the 45.7, at the same time selling the 64s, selling the 69s, right? So we're going to be buying at that green and selling at that red. Again, assuming that those non-farm payrolls do not come out outside of expectations. If they surprise us tomorrow, this wedge is going to get blown out of the water and we're going to be finding a new trend and following that trend tomorrow morning. So come out and join me tomorrow in the trade room and we'll give you guys some more guidance as far as what we're doing at that time. Moving forward here, last but not least, again, a very active environment right now on the Russell, but looking at this, you wouldn't even think so. Just like yesterday. Yesterday was an incredible day for us on the Russell. We had a little fake out breakout. We had a little short, had a little long back up. I mean, we really were able to make some great money. But the problem was, is, you know, you look at this and you say, well, how? That's a pretty narrow range. Well, yeah, if you're comparing it to Monday's price action, we dropped 3%. So Monday, we took a bath. Tuesday was narrow. Wednesday, yesterday was a very good day, but you wouldn't even know by looking at it. And then here you have today, Thursday, another just range bound type of scenario. Now, it was quite interesting because this afternoon or this morning, I should say, the opening print happened right at the high. And so this obviously, when we open up inside the range, I'm immediately thinking fake out breakout. So we see this doji candlestick. Look what happens when you zoom in on this. Okay, so the first candlestick now breaks out. Okay, so we opened up inside the range. The first candlestick closes above. That tells me right off the bat, those buyers are relatively strong. Usually what happens is, usually that first candlestick will try, but it won't be able to actually close above that 96.7. In this case, it did. So we immediately shifted our, 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 our kind of our, our uh, uh, interpretation of this, and we thought, okay, now we know that even though we opened up inside, clearly there's a bullish tone to things. Remember, at 8.30, we heard from jobless claims, which are bullish, and, of course, international trade, which is also bullish for equities. So this came after news this morning, about an hour after the news. But then we get this little doji. And this little doji candlestick is what told me that we might see this thing go drop back in. It didn't end up happening. But what did end up happening was doji jumped up. We test the 11.05, as we talked about last night. And then we ended up just kind of sitting here sideways for the most of the day. You can see that we, by the end of the morning, which is right about there, right? That's the end of the morning right there. We were looking a little bit sleepy, sloppy, and, and again, like I said last night, after 10.30 this morning, we were expecting everybody to be taking their money out of the market and waiting for tomorrow's non-farm payrolls. So a very active day on the Russell early in the session, but it did end up kind of trailing off there towards the end of the day as, as expected. 
Again, I'm trying not to predict right now. If I get an opening print tomorrow morning at 9.30 above 1105.2, I am looking for buys. If I get an opening print tomorrow below 93.7, I'm looking for sells. We saw a slightly higher two-day relationship, a narrow range again today, and we closed in the middle. These three clues tell me that we are bullish right now in the short term. The narrow range tells me to expect a big possible day tomorrow, which would make all the sense in the world with non-farm payrolls on the horizon. And being closed in the middle today basically tells me that we are in balance now going into tomorrow. So slightly bullish. We finished the day today pretty much back where we started. Again, just screaming at us that people are waiting for non-farm payrolls before they leave their money in the market overnight. Get me above 5.2 and I'm buying. An easy target up top here would be the prior week low, 27.7. And as I move even higher here, I got my prior week high. So this would be where I'd be shooting for tomorrow, the prior week high. If we get non-farm payrolls higher than expectations, I'm looking to buy above the 1105. I will take some profit off at 27.7. That's the opening bell of the week. I've got 35.6, another easy target. But guys, my eyes are fixed on that prior week high at 44.5. That's where I'm going to be holding on to a runner tomorrow if we get this baby coming out the gate bullish. If it comes out the gate bearish, if non-farm payrolls come out lower than expectations, we'll get away from this big round number of 1,100, get me below 93.7. I have an immediate target at 78 even. I'm going to skip these levels here, and I'm gunning for that 1031.9. Okay, so that'll be my runner target, that 1031.9. Now, again, as always, I'm not trying to predict. I'm going to react tomorrow morning to what I see in the market after 9.30 a.m. This is, I'm sorry, after 8.30 a.m. And then at 9.30, depending on where the opening bell is, on this VIP chart, I'll make a decision whether I'm buying or selling from there. And then all I'm going to do is, is try to hold on to that runner tomorrow and try to get as much out of it. Remember, we're talking about non-farm payrolls tomorrow, guys. This is the granddaddy of all the news. If you pick one day to hold a runner, tomorrow is it. Tomorrow is it. Last but not least here on the Russell, we have our anchor chart. And on the Russell right now, you can see we got a flat moving average. we got very small cloud. You can see we're, we're, we're looking bullish, right? Like I said this, uh, at the beginning of this call here today, uh, we are bullish here on the equities after a few days in a row of really getting, uh, you know, taking it on the chin here. Equities are being seen as being a bargain right now. Confidence building here in the U.S. regarding the news that we saw this week. So it's clear to see that we're bullish, but you can also see, though, that we're running right into this trend line right into this channel right as I zoom out here you can see that channel here very easy to see the channel so the channel again go to the go to the blog and you'll see here all of these all these charts are posted for you but you can see though we're right on top now of that channel high so in the short term it looks like we're pretty bullish here in the short term but the problem is we have this resistance level that's going to be kind of spoiling the party for the buyers here so this top of that channel, definitely have to respect that because that channel goes back a few weeks. I've got a trend line being drawn here, and this does not look good for us here overnight. So we get a little bit of a price wedge here, a little bit of a bullish price wedge. Now, because we're bullish, if you want to get trading here this evening, I would recommend that we get above the 1100. There's a big round number here at 1100. Get me above 1100. And then I can start buying. I have targets now overhead. Here are my targets overhead. I've got 1105. That's a that's a very short-term target. That's just double top here. My big target though is going to be 1110.8. That's my buyer's target here overnight, and as as well as into tomorrow morning. Now remember, we're probably going to have to redo this tomorrow morning as things get shaken up. But this should be enough here for overnight, though, if you can get into a trade long here above 1100, take some profit off at the high at 1105, try to hold on to a runner up to 1110.8. What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen tomorrow? I've got some support down here at 93.3. So if we happen to drop here overnight, 
look for that to be a buying opportunity there. Once I get below 91.7, I can sell short now down to 83.8. Take some profit there. I've got some support here at 78.2. And if we see this thing tumble, I'm looking for shorts all the way down to the lows of this channel, right? All the way down to the lows of the channel. So I want to get below 91.7 for a short. I want to get below 81.1 for a short. And I want to get below 78.2 for a short. As I'm going lower, I'm taking profit at all of these support levels on the way down to the lows of that channel. All righty? So tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m., be there. We're going to see some fireworks tomorrow morning, and I'm excited to have you there with me tomorrow as a new student in our live trade room at the School of Trade. We've had a fantastic week this week, and we're going to wrap it up tomorrow with another profitable day. This time, we're going to have some help from our biggest news event that we get as day traders, non-farm payrolls. Keep in touch. Don't forget to share this newsletter with a friend. They'll be, they'll be happy you did. Join our free trial. Register for the newsletter on our blog and come see me as a new advanced student in our live trade room tomorrow morning starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Signing off for now. Have yourselves a fantastic evening and don't forget to learn it so you can earn it. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.